Drug and food shortages are here, and they will get a lot worse, Michael Snyder reports. A lot of the experts did not think that this would happen. Once the pandemic subsided, global supply chains were supposed to return to normal. But now, hundreds of drugs are in short supply in the United States, and even CNN is admitting that we are in the midst of the worst food crisis in modern history. As I did research for this article, I was stunned by what I discovered. Things are worse than I realized. I knew that a lot of drugs were in short supply, but it turns out that there have been shortages of many of most basic, our most basic antibiotics since last October, and now Pfizer is telling us that several types of penicillin will completely run out later this year. Pfizer will run out of several doses of penicillin, which treat syphilis, strep throat, and other infections later this year as shortages rip across the U.S. supply chain. The company anticipates running out of their children's dose of the syphilis drug Bacillin LA by the end of June, according to a letter Pfizer posted Tuesday on the Food and Drug Administration's website. The company says it's prioritizing production of larger doses of Bacillin LA, which is recommended for pregnant people with syphilis because it is the only drug that can pass through the placenta and also treat the fetus. A different Pfizer penicillin, Bacillin CR, that treats other bacterial infection but not syphilis, is expected to run out in the third quarter, which ends September 30th. Pfizer's penicillin has been in shortage since April. Of course, there are growing shortages of many other commonly used drugs. For example, one recent survey discovered that most cancer centers in the U.S. quote, are reporting shortages of commonly used chemotherapy drugs, end quote. The recent survey found that a majority of cancer centers are reporting shortages of commonly used chemotherapy drugs used to treat a wide variety of cancers. Much of the current shortage stems from the temporary closure of a drug manufacturing facility in India that happened after the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, found issues in the plant's quality control. After I first read that, I immediately had one burning question come to mind. Why in the world are we having our chemotherapy drugs manufactured in India. Once the war between the U.S. and China starts, it's going to be extremely difficult to get things shipped across the Pacific. So what are we going to do then? And already certain chemotherapy drugs are in such short supply that some doctors are being forced to ration care. Can you imagine? Cancer drugs, including widely used cyplatin and carboplatin, are in such short supply that doctors are rationing care, asking patients to drive long distances for treatment or turning to alternative treatments with riskier side effects. This was not supposed to happen, but it is happening. In fact, the New York Times is telling us that there are shortages of hundreds of drugs in the United States right now. Hundreds of drugs are on the list of medications in short supply in the United States as officials grapple with an opaque and sometimes interrupted supply chain, quality, and financial issues that are leading to manufacturing shutdowns. The shortages are so acute that they are commanding the attention of the White House and Congress, which are examining the underlying causes of the faltering generic drug market, which accounts for about 90% of domestic prescriptions. Meanwhile, global supplies of food just continue to get even tighter, and this is going to greatly affect consumers here in this country. According to Zero Hedge, global cocoa supplies are becoming extremely tight, and this could push chocolate prices to dizzying heights. Cocoa prices have soared 44% over the last nine months to seven-year highs as the global cocoa bean deficit worsens for the second consecutive year. The cocoa market has experienced a remarkable surge in prices, this season marks the second consecutive deficit, with cocoa ending stocks expected to dwindle to unusual low levels. S&P Global Commodity Insights principal research analyst Sergei Chervertakov told CNBC via email. If you love chocolate, I would stock up now while you still can. In addition, Zero Hedge has also reported that there are very serious concerns about global supply levels of sugar and coffee, with cocoa consumption at record highs in some Western countries. A worsening global bean deficit will only support higher price prices. Meanwhile, sugar prices hit decades highs 
on global shortage fears in April, and Robusta coffee prices hit a record high days ago on supply fears. There are just some grocery stores aisles where inflation looks exceptionally sticky. Most of us could live without chocolate, sugar, and coffee, but what about the basics? One food bank in southern Georgia is warning that they're facing a severe shortage of food and they are desperate for help. Quote, we're just, we're just experiencing the biggest food shortage we have in the, pa- in the 40 years of food banking, and quote, CEO of Feeding the Valley Food Bank, Frank Shepard said, and it's pandemic related, it's, re- it's really a number of causes our federal government and state government provided a plentiful amount of food during the pandemic to help so many more people in need, and those supply lines are just a little slow to replenish. Then you have the whole supply chain issue. Things are just taking three, four, five, ten times as long to get to us as they used to, and rapid inflation is affecting a lot of people, a lot of our donors as well, so it's really just a perfect storm. Unfortunately, the circumstances that has got our inventories at record low levels. And hopefully, he said, now hopefully some people will set up and help them out, step up and help them. But the truth is that supplies of food are only going to get tighter and tighter in the months ahead. In a previous article, I discussed the following facts. The winter wheat harvest in Kansas this year is going to be the smallest since 1957, when we had about half the population in the U.S. U.S. corn prices are expected to soar because the corn belt is being hit by the worst drought in 30 years. The size of the U.S. beef cow herd has fallen to the lowest level since 1962. The orange harvest in Florida in 2023 will be approximately 56% smaller than it was last year. Thanks to absolutely crazy weather patterns, approximately 90% of Georgia's peach crop for this year has been wiped out. On top of everything else, now millions of Mormon crickets have invaded Nevada and they're eating everything in sight. According to the University of Nevada in Reno, Mormon crickets eat native herbaceous perennials, forbs, grasses, shrubs, and cultivated forage crops, reducing feed for grazing wildlife and livestock. In large numbers, their feeding can contribute to soil erosion, poor water quality, nutrients depleted soils, and potentially cause damage to range and cropland ecosystems. Drought encourages Mormon crickets outbreaks, which may last several years, historically 5 to 21 years, and cause substantial economic losses to rangeland, cropland, and home gardens. This is particularly true as adults and nymphs of Mormon crickets migrate in a band, eating plants along their path. And of course, all of this is happening in the contents of a horrific global food crisis. According to one recent report, The number of people around the globe that are facing acute food insecurity increased by a whopping 34% last year. The report concluded that the number of people facing acute food insecurity in 58 countries and territories in 2022 was 258 million, and this was the highest in the seven-year history of the report, signifying a deteriorating trend in global acute food insecurity. In 2021, 193 million people in 53 countries and territories faced acute hunger, so the figure for 2022 reflected a 34% jump within just one year. A global famine has begun, and it will eventually get a a whole lot worse. If you've not prepared for such a scenario, I would strongly encourage you to get started. As I have detailed in this article, drug and food shortages are already here, And what we have been through so far is just the tip of the iceberg. And this is by Michael Snyder. He is about the author. My name is Michael. My brand new book entitled End Times is now available on Amazon. In addition to my new book, I've written six other books that are available on Amazon, including Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life that Really Matters, Commissions Earned. When you purchase any of these books, you help to support the work that I'm doing. And one way that you can really help is by sending copies as gifts to family and friends. Time is short and I need help getting these warnings into the hands of as many people as possible. I have also started a brand new Substack newsletter and I encourage you to subscribe so you won't miss any of the latest updates. I've published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream and the Most Important News. 
And the articles that I publish on those sites are published on dozens of other prominent websites all over the globe. I always freely and happily allow others to republish my articles on their own websites, but I also ask that they include this about the author section with each article. The material contained in this article is for general information purposes only, and readers should consult licensed professionals before making any legal, business, financial, or health decisions. I encourage you to follow me on social media, Facebook, and Twitter, and any way that you can share these articles with others is definitely a great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, I strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. And this is by Michael Snyder on End of the American Dream. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.